to show you how to use a brayer, which is a roller that is on a handle. Um, the brayers are just, these brayers happen to be some kind of a uh, hard rubber with a um, metal handle, and they work quite well. We're going to take a regular plastic tray, and all of these things that I'm showing you come in the uh, printmaking kit. So the first color I'm going to do is I'm going to put some green. And I'm actually going to put the green ink. I'm just going to spread it like peanut butter right on the roller part of the brayer. I'm going to take some red and do the same thing on this tray. This one looks like it's been separating, so I'm going to stir it up first. It doesn't take very long, but you, you can see it's a thicker consistency than paint. All right, so our, we've got our brayer, we've got our ink. Now I need to put this on a plate. For this demonstration, I'm going to show you the intaglio plate. This is simply a meat tray that I have cut the the outer edge off so that makes a nice flat surface. I could have used the textured side, but I chose to use the writing side and I just left the writing on there and I drew a picture on top of that simply by using a pencil. I first lightly sketched it with the pencil and then I used the pencil as a knife and dug a little bit deeper. It's a little tricky drawing on styrofoam because it's a thick, coarse thing, but you can see it's going to make a nice plate. So I'm ready to ink this, and to do that, I put my image face up, I roll the ink back and forth with the brayer. What I'm trying to do is get an even cover coverage of ink on the brayer. You can see right now there's some gaps on the side, so I'm going to keep on going back and forth in the tray. It kind of looks like little spider webs when it's ready. That looks good. So I'm going to put this on top of my plate. Got the ink on there and you can you can see that the image is still showing because the ink does not go in the grooves. Now I'm going to have Lenita hand me a piece of paper since I forgot to get the paper in the first place. And I just take that paper and I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to take my plate, turn it upside down, press a little bit, turn it over, press a little harder with my hand. Another thing I like to use is a, the back of a wooden spoon. This is just called burnishing it. If you have a clean brayer, you can also use a brayer to roll back and forth. But you want to be able to get all the corners. And before I pull my paper off, I cheat and I peek to see if it's all inked up and it looks like it's a pretty good print. So this is called pulling a print. And even though there was writing on there, it looks like part of the vase that was, it looks just like the vase was, had some kind of a design on it. And that is intaglio printing. Now we can do the same thing, take this same plate and I can put green on top of it and I will get green and red mix, which is okay. The three colors that you have in the, the uh, kit is red, green, and black. The black would be the last color you'd use because it would cover up the green. But this is going to mix together. Right now it just looks like green. But when you put that again, I'm just going to press it first to get it stuck on the paper, turn it over, 
rub it. second print. So you can see a little bit of the green and red mix and it kind of looks like a dark brown. That's intaglio printing. You get two images off of one plate. I can continue to print off that plate and get a lot more images. Before we go on to the next step, uh, Lanita and I'd like to sort of share some tips with you because we have done this for our many teaching years and we have learned a lot of tips. When I start this block printing exercise with my kids, I always take, I always do the putting the ink on the brayer first. And I do that a couple of times so they can see how much ink I put on. Right now, I do not need to put any more ink. As long as there's lots of ink in this tray, I do not need to put any more on. And can you put too much ink on a plate? Yes, you can. It can go into the grooves and then your print will not show up. So. For the first couple of times, you just want to put a little bit, with this much, just a little bit spread on the brayer. And remember the object is just to get those spider webs across. If it still looks like it's too much ink, you can push that ink out of the way, leave that for another time, and come back. Or you can print some of the ink off, oops, print some of the ink off on a piece of paper and then come back and, and fill your brayer. What do you do? What's, what are some of the tricks that you do with it? Uh, like you, I, I, I set the standard. And I say, with the elementary students, yabba dabba do, a little dabble do. And it's, it's, it's like uh, Sue said, if, if you get too much, then it's gonna clog up your print. Now, sometimes too, when you're using the brayer, if you roll it, you have to pick it up to keep it moving because if a student does this sometimes it will slide so it's really a good idea to pick it up and uh, as she did reverse the direction you can't go wrong even if they put too much ink on let them print it again they, they love this activity it's a wonderful activity for them it's using all their small motor big motor skills they are learning lots of uh, different things with this so yeah. just play with it it's fun and it's a water based it's a water-based ink, so you can take it to the sink and wash it and pat it dry and start all over. That's right. When you're finished, in this case, I have enough ink, I can actually scrape some of it up and put it back. And you want to do that just so you don't get a lot of ink down your, down your sink. But this is water-based. You take this, put this under the faucet, and then just wash your sponge with a, uh, I mean your brayer with a sponge. And you can also wash the stick if you want to use that again. And if you notice, Sue and I both have aprons on. I, I, I keep a classroom set of t-shirts available in my classroom so students can just put them on and cover them up. And if you're a self-contained class, you can have each student bring their own shirt and keep it in their cubby. And it makes a really nice... Um, well, they'll have it for a lot of activities, not just for printing. So right, it's right. Great it's to good. Have on hand. It's good. 